Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about mythical creatures and how they came about in society and throughout history. Uh, well, it's only partially true. We're actually talking about a disease that has been shown throughout history to be afflicting people and how the society of the time kind of explained away their symptoms and how things came about from their explanations. All right, let's get into it. All right, so today we are going to explain the coming about of vampires. I assume I need no introduction. Now, throughout history, vampires have been explained in many different cultures across the world, across the centuries, thousands and thousands of years. Uh, there's been a vampire-type creature in all cultures. Um, now, they all weren't called vampires. They had many different names, many different appearances. Uh, but the one thing they had in common was that they needed blood to survive. That's their one common trait. So I'm going to be talking about disease, a disease known as porphyria. Now this is one disease that is speculated to be contributing to why people thought that vampires were real. And I'll explain to why people thought that that was how it was. Um, but first we need to define what a vampire actually is. So what do we know about vampires in general? Um, they can't come out of the sunlight because it burns their skin. They need to drink blood. Um, they can shapeshift. I don't know where that came from. They are allergic to garlic and they also need to be killed in the heart with a stake or maybe something silver if you see an underworld. So that's what we know about vampires as of today. That's what society has classified as a vampire. Um, we're not going to go into like those sparkly ones because yeah. so in this disease known as porphyria this is a blood disease and there are many many different sub kinds of porphyria uh, we're just going to be talking about general porphyria and how the symptoms of this disease kind of relate to vampires so porphyrin is a molecule in the blood, in a red blood cell, that is broken down by enzymes, and it's the cycle of your body's blood. It's scientific. It's just what it is. So when a person doesn't have enough enzymes in order to break down the porphyrin, there's increased porphyrin in the blood, hence then they have porphyria. Some signs and symptoms include extreme sun sensitivity uh, in some of the subtypes. Um, abdominal pain, hypertension, constipation. Um, also some subtypes have uh, issues with their gums and teeth being discolored, usually red or brown. And this has been uh, linked to have a hereditary uh, component, although not all of them of course, but there is some hereditary components related to this disease. You can also have anxiety, seizures, and urine that turns a very, very dark red when exposed to sunlight. Uh, so with porphyria, it attacks the central nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, and the peripheral nervous system, all in different ways, based on the different kinds. Um, but all of those areas <clears throat> are affected, and therefore you have a very wide range of symptoms. So if we go way, way, way back to... 19th century Europe. This is where the vampire that we know today has officially originated. Uh, so pe people who suffered from porphyria, which is a, it's a very rare disease, but still, uh, those who suffered would not be able to come out, would have the discolored of mouth and teeth, so maybe it looked like they were drinking blood or whatever. And um, they had this kind of a wave of hysteria where they started digging up bodies, which I don't know why they chose to do that, but they dug up all these oh, these dead bodies to like examine them and see what was going on with them. So they found that they had longer hair, longer nails, their stomachs were distended. So the only logical reason to think that would be that they're getting up and eating people and then getting back in their grave when they're done eating at night. <clears throat> Um, 
all of those characteristics can be explained now by science. Um, when you, after you, your body has dead, you dehydrate because you're obviously not taking in any more water because you're dead. Uh, so therefore, your hair looks longer because your skin is retracting back and then your nails do continue to grow a little bit after you've gone. So your nails will get a little bit longer. And your stomach will be distended, not because you're eating anything, but because the gases in your body as the decomposition starts, they produce gas, so then it distends your stomach. Things we all know now as science has progressed, but at the time they were like, Holy f people are getting up out of their graves and eating people and then getting back in. Which is why you see some graves that have cages over them. Uh, not to keep anybody out, but to keep that in. But uh, no, no worries, it, it stayed in. It did stay in its grave. Yes. So a treatment for porphyria is really just trying to uh, get rid of the porphyrin rings or the porphyrin molecule uh, that is obviously causing all the issues. In some countries they use an infusion system of glucose and heme and in other countries they use an injection just depending on uh, what's available. Very easily treatable so there are no vampires walking among us. <laughs> Um, so what could trigger this person to have like an outbreak or an attack, an acute attack of porphyria? Anything that would increase the production of hemoglobin, which would therefore increase the porphyria molecules, which there's not enough enzymes and now there's more, makes sense, right? Uh, drinking alcohol can increase that. Uh, certain medications that trigger production, lack of food or starvation can increase production as well, uh, which would make sense in the 19th century Europe. There probably wasn't a whole lot of food going around uh, in that time. So maybe people who had this but weren't symptomatic were having less access to food, therefore causing increased hemoglobin production, therefore causing an outbreak or an acute attack. And since it did run in families, they often kind of thought, well, the, the one had it and then he infected his family by biting them or whatever. So we're going to talk about a famous person that has porphyria. Uh, they are long gone now, but they have also contributed to the vampire that we know today, and that is Vlad the Impaler. Uh, he was a leader of Romania in the 1400s until his death, and he was known to have this disease, and he did have issues with going out in sunlight and having his skin break out and horrible rashes. Uh, so this is where the light sensitivity, unable to go out in the daylight myth came from. As far as the garlic and the stake in the heart uh, thing, I'm not sure where that came from. Uh, but that is all about porphyria, and even though it was something that caused a lot of mass hysteria in history. It is a very, very treatable disease, and if you know anybody who has it, uh, don't accuse them of being a vampire, because that's rude. Um, just, just maybe just don't bring it up, because they're probably private about their personal health, and they don't really need to talk about it. So that's all I have for you today. Let me know what you think down below. Um, it's not quite Halloween yet, but I feel like Halloween always gets skipped, because then everybody's like so excited about Thanksgiving and, and all that turkey mess, and so I kind of wanted to touch on something a little more like spooky or whatever, but explained by science. Uh, so tell me what you think down below. I will catch you guys in the next one, and if you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. It really helps my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.